Now, without further ado, I get to introduce Graham Simmons from Aon Therapeutic. Graham, come on over. Big shout out to you and to Brian Keene, who I feel like is everywhere. That guy is a is sort of a resident badass of really whoever he works with. But uh, but Graham, nice to officially meet you and welcome to our stage, man. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. Now, now make sure I get this correct. Uh, the ticker here is A-N-T-C-F. Is that right? Uh, that is on the OTC, which is sort of an unofficial listing. Our primary listing is on the CSE, which is A-I-O-N up in Canada. Oh, well, I'm glad I asked. A-I-O-N, C-S-E, A-I-O-N. All right, man, I'm going to let you jump right in. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some questions and, and we'll come back. Thanks very much. And I want to thank uh, Brian for joining. Um, just so everyone knows, Brian Keene is uh, a close uh, advisor to the company and works closely with us uh, on everything to do with capital markets. Um, and I'll jump right in. Uh, before we get started, though, I'll just let you know a little bit about myself. So I've been involved in uh, public company management for for uh, over 20 years now, which is unbelievable to believe. But um, it's been a long time. Uh Mostly was in the gaming industry up until about 2012 when I switched into uh, fintech and uh, expanded that into uh, um, uh, other disruptive technologies, which led me to cannabis. And um, and that sort of flowed us into this uh, this opportunity here, which is a combinatorial uh, mushroom and cannabis uh, business, um, developing really interesting um, products for that market now. I'm also, just so everyone knows, I'm also chairman um, and chair of the in, in the investment committee for a company called Plant Based Investment Corp, which is also listed on the CSC um, and is the largest cash investor into this company. And so given I'm the CEO, we do consider this an active uh, investment within our portfolio. Um, we are an early warning reporter, which means that if we buy or sell the stock, uh, we have to report that and uh, we continue to support the stock through uh through uh, private placements, and and we have uh, we have the backing of the business, um, and so I just want to make sure everyone understands that um, I've got kind of dual roles here as the largest sort of uh, cash investor representative, as well as the person driving the capital market side of the business. So, to jump right into sort of Ion, and what makes it very unique, in my opinion, is that. Um, you know, we take both cannabis and mushrooms, um, and a lot of people have been looking at, you know, uh, specifically the mushroom opportunity and where it's going, both medicinally, functional, um, and into the psilocybin and psilocin and the uh, psychedelic side. Uh, and we're kind of combining all of that and really taking a, a, a really unique look at how we can combine um, these various botanical-based um you know, cannabinoids and compounds and bring them together uh, to help heal people and, and deliver those solutions. Um, as I mentioned, we're uh, listed on the CSE, AION. Uh, we are working on a formal listing in the United States, and we will look at moving into Europe as well once that's complete. Um, but we do want to access uh, a global market with this company, just given uh, that we treat uh, global issues uh, with regards to uh, health and, uh, and the drug discovery that we're working on. Hey, Graham, I'm so sorry, just to interrupt really quickly. If you're sharing your screen, we can't see it. So I just wanted to make sure that I am before sure. we get too far. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we don't have it up just yet. So if you could hit the share button at the very bottom, we'll make Hold sure on. we get this rolling. It was sharing. Hold on. Somehow. Window. There we go. See that? Hold on, yeah, hold on. Let me add this to the stream. Okay, now we've got you. Go ahead, man. Okay, don't and feel free to interrupt me at any time if uh, something's not going right. But <laughs> um, so anyway, Ion, as I mentioned, CSE listed, uh, AOIN. We're looking at uh, we're actually in the process of, of a U.S. listing and, and, and a more formal uh, QB listing, and then we're also looking at European opportunities as well. Um, 
And as I mentioned, we're, we're very focused on the combinatorial aspects of mushroom and cannabis biopharmaceuticals. So we're really looking at how do we combine both non-psychedelic and psychedelic ingredients with both THC, CBD, flavonoids, and other compounds within the cannabis plant um, on their own and independently, but also in a combinatorial manner to see how we can actually uh, develop uh, the best um, products for 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 consumers and, and and the people in need really so uh we take a unique approach our our medical team is really strong and and so ip and development of ip and patents are very important to us and we've got dr stephen barnhill who's a specialist in that he's an award-winning patent um inventor and um and he's and he's specifically been awarded um um, patents in artificial intelligence. And those are very important as we develop, um, you know, these combinatorial formulas and really work through, um, you know, how we combine these, these um, compounds to discover the best in class uh, products. Um, I think it's also really important to mention that, you know, we do have a Jamaican arm. Uh, this is really important when we start talking about the combinations of, of, anything that would involve a THC um, or uh, psilocybin and psilocin. And they're not scheduled drugs in Jamaica. Uh, and we do have um, uh, access uh, through our relationship with Apollon Pharmaceuticals um, to a cannabis license. So we do have access to uh, the products through that and to do our testing and, and our patient care. Uh, as I just mentioned, Dr. Stephen Barnhill, who's our executive chairman, um, leads the company on the medical side. Uh, his background uh, is very broad, but but specifically what's really important to our company is his experience in development of intellectual property and patents. Um, and he's defended significant patents. He's invented them. Um, and he's uh, he's he, he's he's very critical from that perspective. And then when we get into the science side, uh, Dr. Herb Fritchie um, is an MD Anderson guy for over 40 years. Uh, well, one of the most well-known um, in the cancer uh, world. And uh, to have him involved is is really an honor. Um, he's retired from that position at MD Anderson, and he's quite involved with us. And it's great to have him on board. Also with us, who's not on this screen, is um, Dr. Winston Delahaye, who's Jamaican-based, Johns Hopkins-trained psychiatrist, and he'll be leading all of our psychiatry, um, uh, you know, our our our, um, our patient center that we're launching right now in Jamaica. And he's uh, he's phenomenal on that side. Herb's background is really Dr. Fritchie's background is really on the cancer side, but he does lead the science division. Um, myself, who I, I've explained, um, and then Paul Kratz, our lead independent director. He's also the CEO of Plant Based Investment Corp, a largest cash investor, and he is. Uh, very involved at the board level, an experienced lawyer and um, an M and A guy, uh, which brings a lot of capital markets experience to the company. So we've got an exceptional team, and there's a lot of depth behind us that really supports this group, um, and uh, from all levels of of, of our uh, of our business. So this is sort of you know kind of the key to what we're seeing uh, develop and why we're all here with regards to cannabis and and as we move into mushrooms we're really seeing you know other even other plant based products becoming very critical to you know new drug discovery and synthetic pharma's definitely been failing there's been a lot of challenges for it over the last few years as people become more knowledgeable um, as to what they want to put in their bodies and um, you know we're all living that these days for sure um so again, biopharma is is where we're focused, um, and you know, obviously, looking at all aspects of of psychedelic um, opportunities as well as into you know uh, the traditional, more medicinal mushroom opportunities and and the cannabis, uh, CBD, THC, and other cannabinoids. So again, I think what's really important to see here is, you know, this isn't anything necessarily new. A lot of a lot of prescription drugs are based on natural sources. Um, these are just these are just opportunities that you know are sort of newer in terms of the types of plants and the type types of botany that we're looking at and and starting to test that were, you know, to some extent, um, you know, offside with with 
you know, uh, the laws in, in various countries and things like that historically. But now as we get to explore these opportunities, I think we're starting to see a, a, a very, um, you know, active consumer base and patient base that is looking for these you know, natural, uh, natural, natural, naturally derived drugs that that can help them. Um, and so based on that, you know, we are seeing if, if you look at the booming market, we're, we're seeing a, a growth rate where this, you know, between 2017 and 2026, it's expected to to double in size in terms of botanical and plant derivative derivative uh, drug markets. So a bit about ION. So, you know, we obviously use uh, we're kind of unique in the sense that we actually do uh, source our own mushrooms. We're in Jamaica. We can. We actually are opening our own um, production facility there, um, and um, and cultivation facility. Uh, we have access to a processing facility um, through Apollon, and it's and and it's our our relationship with them strategically in Jamaica. So not only can we um, access cannabis products through that for our testing, but we can also access. Um, the, the mushroom uh, distillates, et cetera, for our, for our uh, drug development. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're both going down the psychoactive side and the nutraceutical side, the non-psychoactive side, which I think is really important because as we look at, um, you know, the home wellness market, we look at the role of CBD and its expansion and, and the non-psychoactive cannabinoids, as well as the non-psychoactive mushrooms, um, there's a major movement uh, across the globe and, and, and in those types of opportunities, which are really the low hanging fruit from a revenue perspective. So I think it's important for us to have that as sort of a key element of how we're building this business, while at the same time doing that research and doing that investigation through our Jamaican presence on the combinations of THC, uh, psilocybin, and really looking at um, mental health and, and what we can do with that in, in, a, in a legal jurisdiction. So we've got a very unique sort of bifurcated model um, that allows us to get to revenue quickly, broadly, while also developing, you know, we think more long term on the on the on the drug discovery side in Jamaica. Again, I've kind of gone over this, but, you know, just to, to make it very clear, it's all natural. And, and obviously, we're looking at the combination of these products and these compounds. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of research that's been going on in looking at the combinatorial effects of various, uh, compounds within both the uh, cannabis plant and our, um, various mushrooms, both psychedelic, uh, and edible. This is important. This is sort of our, our sort of our target, right? We're going after these large disease categories. We've started with cancer. Uh, in mental health. That's where our doctors and our science uh, experts are, have been historically focused. Um, we think those are two of the most significant opportunities um, uh, to focus on. And so the mental health aspect of things, again, being led by Dr. Winston Delahaye um, in the uh, Jamaican facility that we have. And then obviously Dr. Herb Fritchie out of Houston with Dr. Stephen Barnhill and really focused on our cancer opportunity. And I'll let you know about some recent news on that um, as we get on with the presentation. The, the other three, inflammation, viral disease, and obesity, we all think are e equally important uh, and we are moving into those. Um, but as, as we all know, you can't boil the ocean. We're staying kind of focused early here on a couple of these key indications. And that's, that's really where we're applying our capital. So again, we have patents filed, um, uh, and there's actually we've actually recently just filed a few more here. Um, and um, you know, our team is is really an expert in customizing and putting together these patents and putting them together in a very protective way, a defendable way. Um, we've started with blocking pa uh, blocking patents that really cover those indications and put us in a very strong position with regards to others in the field um, in terms of the way we're going to approach these indications. So again, I, I mentioned this, but we're partnered with uh, Apollon Formularies Jamaica. Um, and again, Jamaica is very key because first of all, THC is legal there. Um, Apollon has a, a license there with, with for cannabis. Uh, and we also are utilizing their infrastructure through uh, access and lease agreements that allow us to not put a, a lot of capex into that market, rather 
you know, utilize that infrastructure, be able to do the work we need to do and leverage the infrastructure that they've already invested in. So that's it's really a low capital opportunity in Jamaica, which I think is important because um, it allows us to invest our capital with regards to our drug discovery and our work as opposed to, you know, buying um, significant amounts of equipment, land and property and, and you know, getting into that uh, side of the business, which is really not going to provide a tremendous amount of value long term. So this is a really good advantage for us to have that relationship with Apple on Formulators Jamaica, who Dr. Stephen Barnhill, by the way, is also chairman and CEO of that company. Well, sorry, he's, he's, he's um, I believe, president of that company, but of the parent, he's the chairman and CEO. Um, so again, that's that's what we're doing there, and we are putting uh, mushroom cultivation uh, into the location, and we're using the processing facility for both cannabis and mushroom experts, and we're bringing our people from uh, California down there uh, to do the work that they need to do um, and develop the products. They they've already been down, even though it's been COVID. So we're starting to see things open up, which has been great to advancing our our, our development of product uh, for our testing and the things that we need to do uh, in Jamaica. So this just gives you an idea of our product sort of pipeline and, and how things move um, across. And uh, I apologize, but I'm noticing there's some font issues in this picture, but uh, I'm not the graphic designer. So, um, but at, at any rate, I uh, apologize for that. But you can kind of see how we step through this. We do drug formulation, nanotechnology. We have to figure out the lab testing, and then we move through to developing pro product and getting into our data collection, and then bring it to market. Uh, the nutraceuticals, uh, we've been focused on quickly because that obviously is, is easier to work with, easier to test and move, move forward um, as it doesn't involve any of the regulated products. Cancer is a little bit more, um, it's been a big priority for us, but a little bit more time given our testing and the time it takes to do the testing that we've been doing and mental health similarly. The others are obviously, as I mentioned earlier, um, they're all in process and we're working on them, but they're a little bit longer tail as we really want to focus on getting our initial products to market and really getting this company to revenue soon. So I referenced this a little bit earlier. This is our um, this is our, uh, our our highlighted news. Um, working with Apollon and their CBD um, and their CBD uh, formulations, we've actually had tremendous results uh, from our um, our initial work on on testing our products and our formulations against uh, various uh, cancer cells. The best one we've we've done a lot of work on a number of different bre breast cancers, just one of them, but a number of indications, and and obviously not all of them work out well. And you've got to you've got to find the one that works. But what, what's been really amazing and is this, these results have been phenomenal. And, and HER2 plus breast cancer represents 20% of all breast cancers. And we've shown um, amazing, amazing multi-pathway approach to, to killing that breast cancer. So this has been a, a really important development for the company. Um, the testing was performed by BioEnsys. They're a leading pharmaceutical testing laboratory in the United States. Um, and um, Dr. Fritchie was blown away. You can see his quote here. Um, uh, where he says, our recent medicinal mushroom formulation testing demonstrated that two formulations, ion F7 and ion F8, when used together, showed high efficacy in killing HER2 positive breast cancer cells via immune stimulated cytotoxicity by T cells and macrophages. This result suggests that the ion medicinal mushroom formulation has a similar effective, effectiveness as trastuzumab, um, a mono monoclonal antibody treatment. So tratuzumab is, is one of the leading drugs for this. And not only do we have a similar effectiveness of it, um, when they're added together with tratuzumab, it actually increases the efficacy, which I thought was a really important uh, discovery. So, so we're really on to something, and this is why we have invested significantly in our medical team, but also we've invested significantly in testing and really, um, really analyzing our formulations. And, 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 and that, that's something that I believe is very unique to the industry. Um, we really want to prove that our products are working and, and then we can start using them uh, with patient care. Hey, Graham, this yep. is Patrick. I just want to let you know, we, we, I can give you about one more minute, but we okay. are out of time. Uh, any closing or, or final thoughts for us? Yeah, so 
As compared to our competitors, um, I think, you know, we check all the boxes. We've got a very low market cap at 14 million. We're, we have patents. Um, we're both in psilocybin, medical mushrooms, THC cannabis, and com combining those. Uh, great indications, as I said, focused on cancer and medical. Um, and we have the infrastructure in Jamaica to really move things forward without a huge amount of capex. So very unique in that way. Competitive, I think, uh, as, as a company, uh, as we drive forward in our drug discovery platform and a very low market cap. And I can say, you know, we only have 125 million shares, roughly outstanding. And um, as I said, we're the largest cash investor at PBIC and we own a significant amount of the company. Uh, and we're really excited about the future. We believe that our, our medical team, uh, you know, and what they've been able to deliver and discover in the, in the, in the last year since we, we put this company together uh, has been, has been, uh, really amazing and, and we're really excited about the future and getting to revenue which we anticipate will be in the fall of 2021 awesome thank you so much man i really appreciate it thanks for being here um and, and guys take a look at the information here you can reach out to graham directly you can reach out to to phil at kcsa ion at at uh, kcsa.com now now graham you guys have killed it uh, in a very short period of time here. So I'm, a, I'm very excited to see what, what's next for you. And I know Brian and Phil will keep me updated. Uh, one quick question before I let you go here. Yeah. There's another company that recently announced uh, with a, co a business combination, um, Magic Med. They're combining businesses with Enveric Biosciences on the NASDAQ, right? Yeah. So they're going to attack both the, the medical cannabis and psychedelic space, which is interesting. Um, and, and it clearly directly applies to what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. What's the opportunity? What's what if you had to, to boil it down to maybe one sentence? What what's the value of that opportunity in in a, either a combination of those sectors or or each of those sectors individually attacked by the same company? Well, I think it's interesting because we do have a number of patents filed with regards to those combinatorial formulations. So, I mean, that really, uh, you know, we look at this as an arms race and we've been moving fast. And, and, and um, you know, the first thing we did was really get focused on IP and IP protection and making sure that from an arms race perspective, we're ahead of the game on that end of it. And having Dr. Barnhill, who's, who's, a, who's defended at the highest level, his patents, but also award-winning, uh, you know, we're very confident that we're well positioned from an IP perspective. And I think in the end, as we start to see a consolidation in the market, um, you know, there's going to be there's going to be a significant uh, reason for people to be looking at Ion because they're going to want to target our IP and make sure that that you know we're potentially either a part of it or we're, we may be in the acquisition. Uh, acquisition role. Um, so, so I think there will be a consultation and I think, you know, strong IP and really strong medical team with our infrastructure in Jamaica, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be sitting at the table. And I think that's going to be the opportunity in this industry in the course of the next 24 months. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Graham, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, A-I-O-N is the ticker on the CSE, Aon Therapeutic and, and Graham, we'll see you again soon, man. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.